Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast. This is episode 512 for the 27th of Nisan in a regular year. And today we're going to be talking about meditation. So meditation is all the rage these days. It used to be kind of thought of as this kind of hippy dippy uh, new age kind of thing. But nowadays it's really been embraced by all kinds of different people. Some of the most successful people in the world, some billionaires like Jack Dorsey, Ray Dalio actually attribute their success to daily meditation. And what is really interesting about meditation is that you don't need to spend that much time doing it for it to be able to affect your entire day. So like the minimum requisite amount of time that is recommended to people to meditate on a daily basis in order to see results in their daily life is really 10 minutes. 10 minutes is kind of like the bare minimum. Some people say 20 minutes is a little bit more beneficial, but 10 minutes is really the minimum amount. And if you think about that, that's really interesting because there's 24 hours in the day. So 10 minutes is a really small fraction of time in in the context of the entire day. But somehow those 10 minutes really can affect the quality of the entire 24 hours of your day. So there is a quote, which I heard first from Tony Robbins. I, I don't know if he's the original uh, person who said this quote, but I think it's a really good quote where people complain to him and they say like, you know, I'd really like to meditate, but I just don't have the time. And Tony Robbins response to that was, if you don't have 10 minutes, then you don't have a life. And the rec- and then furthermore, I believe this was also attributed to him that if he said, if you don't have 10 minutes, then you probably need to meditate for a good hour <laughs> in your day, because it means that you have like some serious issues in your life if you can't carve out 10 minutes of your day to meditate. So this is very interesting, right? This whole idea of meditation. Now, the question comes up, what is meditation? This this meditation, which is so beneficial, so good for us. So there are different types of meditation. Generally speaking, with this type of meditation, which these successful people, Tony Robbins, Ray Dalio, Jack Dorsey, that they engage in, tend to be more on a basic level, like uh, like more of a mindfulness meditation, from my understanding. Maybe some of them have more Eastern sourced backgrounds, which uh, the basic idea is to try to attune your mind to a state of being present, to a state of being conscious of what's going on around you, to not be affected by your surroundings. And again, the interesting thing is that by taking even just 10 minutes out of your day to do this kind of thing, this when you focus for 10 minutes on not being reactive, for example, then this will infect your entire day so that you are less reactive during the entire day. So to bring it back to Tanya, and this is a Tanya podcast after all. So Tanya talks about meditation too, but the meditation that the Tanya talks about is a little bit different because the goals that we're trying to achieve are a little bit different as well. So while trying to achieve a state of mindfulness, trying to state to achieve a state of consciousness of higher consciousness of really being aware of your actions all of that stuff is really good and positive and obviously and and the tanya does talk about how that is good to be aware of that too we don't want to escape reality and things like that the tanya actually asks something even more from us than that the tanya wants us to live with a consciousness not just of being present here in the world and living in the now but a consciousness of our creator a, pon- a consciousness of god a consciousness of why we're here and what our p- purpose is here and what we're doing here and so what this consciousness is really encapsulated in is in the idea of fearing God because 
in order to really have this sense of our creator and this sense of why we're here, the purpose of our lives, we need to develop a certain level of respect, a certain level of awe of of where we came from, of our creator. So this is what we've been talking about in the Tanya these past few episodes, this idea of trying to cultivate this sense of baseline awe or fear, like on a basic level, how to make it so that as Jews, we live in a, in a, with a state of awareness that we we are not motivated to go against the will of God. And we, we actually become like instinctively like not wanting to go against the will of God. So how do we do that? How do we cultivate that? So, and again, for context, we're still in the middle of chapter 42 of Likutei Amarim. So what today's episode is going to be all about is about meditation and about, and not the same type of meditation that's like the Eastern types where that might have value too in a different way, but this is about meditation upon godly ideas and upon godliness. And just like when you spend even just 10 minutes a day on trying to not be reactive in your meditation practice, let's say, or trying to be more present in the here and now, that can have an effect on the entire 24 hours of your day. So too, as we'll learn in the Tanya, when we even spend just a certain amount of time, the ultra it doesn't specify what that amount of time is. And for each person, it might vary somewhat to get the desired effect. But whatever it is, a fraction of the day, if we just take a fraction of our day to really sit and think and, and contemplate and meditate upon the greatness of God, the Ultra Rebbe teaches us that this will affect the entirety of our day, not just those specific, that specific time when we're engaged in the meditation. It will actually affect our whole day so that it's imbued with the sense of fear of God. So let's get into the text and see how the Ultra Rebbe explains this. So the Ultra Rebbe says that here, every Jewish person no matter who he is, when they take this time, when a Jewish person takes the time to meditate on this, on this idea of how great God is and how God fills the entire world and everything is, and how nothing is devoid of him and that, and just living with that more godly consciousness, some of these things which we talked about in yesterday's episode, so you can go back and listen to that for context. So if a person takes the time to meditate upon these things for a good amount of time every day, and again, the ultra doesn't specify how long that should be. So for each person, it's going to vary a little bit. How it is that God really fills all of the higher worlds, all of the lower worlds, and all of the heavens and all of the earth for real. And his entire earth, the entire earth is filled with God's glory in actuality. And God is literally watching and looking and examining our kidneys and our hearts and all of our actions and all of our speech and all of our steps. And he counts every single one of our steps even. So really every detail of our detail of our lives is really seen by God. So when we really meditate upon this, and when we really think about this, then this will implant in a person's heart the fear for the entire day so that a person won't just like have this like sense of awe and reverence for God at that time of meditation, but it will actually stay with them for the entire day. When a person goes back and reviews this idea, even with like a short meditation, like perhaps throughout the day, we might just like need like a quick little reminder kind of at any time or at any moment, then we might be like, let's say somebody has an opportunity to do something that's against the, the will of God or has an opportunity to, to do something good that is the will of God, then all of a sudden, because of that meditation that we had, we'll get this like instant kind of like ability to, we'll get this ability to instantly tap into that sensation once again. Like once we've taken the time and prioritized that time to set aside the time to meditate in that way, we can tap into it again later in the day is what the altar is saying. And this can prevent us from going, doing things that are bad, which in Hebrew is sur mera, and it will motivate us to the asetov, to do good things, whether it's in thought, whether it's in speech, and whether it's in action, so as not to rebel, God forbid, against God, against the I, and in more poetic, in a more poetic sense, the ultra says against the, the, his glorious eyes that fill the entire world. And then the ultra Rebbe recalls a citation which he had mentioned previously from the Gemara in Brachos 28b, which was where Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai told his students that if only they should have a fear of heaven, like to the on the level of their fear of man. Like if only we had a certain sense of reverence and trepidation before God on the level that we have it in front of man, how we get embarrassed in front of man. 
And then here the Ultra Rebbe brings a citation from Devarim, chapter 10, verse 12, which says, Ki im Hashem lelechet bechol that, uh, again, we had mentioned this before, what is it that God demands of us? All he asks of us is to fear him, to fear God and to walk in his ways. And then, and so we had mentioned this in, I believe it was the previous episode where we talked about this idea that that's the only thing that God's asking of us. All he's asking of us is simply to fear him. And so again, we brought up the question, what do you mean simply to fear him? It's not such a small thing, but then we t learned about Moshe Rabbeinu and how Moshe Rabbeinu helps us with that and all that. So here we're learning about this in another way also. And First, the altar of it tells us that this fear, why is it that that's all that God asks of us is to have this fear is because this fear leads us to be able to keep God's mitzvahs and to like to go to not do anything that's against God and abstain from evil and to do good things. And this level of fear, to be technical about it, is called yira tata. This is the lower level of fear. So we'll learn that there is also a higher level of fear, but for, but to understand this, the lower level of fear is this baseline level of fear that is a level of fear that prevents us from doing sins, from going against God's will and motivates us to do God's will. And then, and so now the ultra is going to go, revisit that question that we had previously about, which I just mentioned before about like, is this really such a small thing? Like fear God. Oh, just fear God. That's all you need to do is fear God and he'll be good. It's like really, okay, just fear God. That's not so simple to just fear God. And so we talked about Moshe Rabbeinu and we talked about how Moshe Rabbeinu represents Das and all of that. And how Das is this idea of this connection and attachment to something. And it's not just knowing on like a superficial or even abstract level. That's merely intellectual but there's an emotional con component to that kind of knowledge so the altar says that this aspect of Moshe Rabbeinu this aspect of this Das which every single Jewish person has within them in our godly souls is indeed a very small thing and be why because because Das is the thing which connects the understanding the hidden understanding of the heart to the re revealed understanding in the mind, in, in thought, as is known to people who know about these things and learn Kabbalah. So basically in sum, so just to explain that last point a little bit. So meaning to say, just to explain this last part, is that basically as we explained, every single one of us has a part of Moshe Rabbeinu within us. We have this Das within ourselves. It just needs to be uncovered. It just needs to be revealed as just like you would search for treasure and uncover the dirt around it. And then that would expose the treasure within the ground. So too, or do we need to do that? We need to just reveal the inherent dots that we have inside of ourselves. And in today's Tanya, in today's uh, se in today's uh, section of the Tanya, the ultra really is starting to give us the tools as to how to do this, how to reveal it in a really practical way. And he says that the way to do that really is through meditation, is through setting aside times, a certain amount of time every day. And again, for each person, that's going to vary somewhat depending on what they're capable of and what their needs are in order to achieve this and really just think about God and think about the greatness of God. Think about how God fills all the entire world. Think about how we're not alone. Think about how there is somebody watching every single action that you do. It's not just, you're not just living in this like chaotic random place uh, where it's a free for all. And if we really take that time to meditate on even in just like a small amount of time, I, I'm going to, even though it doesn't say it here in the Tanya, I'm going to throw out the 10 minutes because we know that that's what the power of regular meditation, like not Jewish meditation, the minimum requisite time is 10 minutes. So if we take even 10 minutes per day to think about God and to really think about where we come from, think about our creator, think about the world and the, on that level, that really will give us this, that really will infuse the rest of our day with this sense of awe of God, which is really something that we have in, within us all along. It just kind of gets like buried up and gets obscured as we go through the distractions of life. So I hope that was insightful and we will continue along these lines tomorrow and I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzchak Ben Binyamin HaKohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. 
If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Taught project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.